The mining motherboard market right now is just insane. The prices are through the roof and everything is really hard to get. Is there anything out there that you can still get that's still within the realm of affordability? Well, I got something right here. Let's check it out, shall we? Alright, so this is actually the BTC37. It is a riserless mining motherboard. So let's see what's in here. So I did order this on Amazon. It did get shipped from China. It did take about almost a month to arrive here. Let's take a look. It's cardboard. We got this nice long thing right here. At least it's in foam, so I know it probably survived the trip. I really hope it did. It actually does have the CPU already built into the motherboard. It does not appear to be socketable. Looks like the CPU is actually directly installed onto the PCB right there. It does take DDR3 RAM right there, and it takes your standard 24 pin motherboard power connector, so we can use a standard ATX power supply on this motherboard. The hard drive or the MSATA is gonna go right there. Looks like we do have a battery there. Now, a lot of people ask if you could run a 3060 non-TI on this. As you all know, the 3060 has that um, Ethereum hash rate limiter that detects whether it's in a full 8 or 16x slot. It also detects whether it has a, mon a monitor plugged in. So you can actually use a dummy plug. I'll have that linked in the description below if you want to get one for yourself. As you can see, these are all soldered in 16 pins, but that doesn't necessarily mean this actually has the full 16 lanes going to each slot right here. You can actually see the traces. You can clearly tell these are 1x traces. They're not 16x traces. Definitely not. So the IO on the motherboard looks like we got a display, uh, we got a HDMI, we got VGA, two USBs, looks like that is a Ethernet, another USB, uh, another two USBs, and these appear to be the, just like the 2.0 low speed USB, we really don't need anything special on a mining motherboard anyway. You see the text right there, it says that is a power switch, so that's pretty cool. We don't even need to wire in a power button to this thing. This does take the uh, SoDim style laptop RAM, so we're just gonna unbox this real quick. All the parts I'm using here will also be listed in the description below. So let me just open this MSATA drive. So it's a little thing like that. It's nothing too crazy, a little tiny one like that. And we're gonna open the RAM right here. All right, and that is the RAM. It's just a laptop style. It's just your standard laptop RAM. So the way you install laptop style RAM, it actually goes in in like a 30 degree angle, and then you press down, and the ears come in and clamp, clamp onto the RAM. I'll show you how it's done. You want to make sure you're going in the correct orientation, and unfortunately, it's this way because then we can't read anything on the RAM. So you just go in at a 30 degree angle, just like that, and then you give it some firm pressure, get that in there, give it a slight wiggle, and then you just press straight down and then these ears will hold the RAM in place to make sure that's all the way in there. I just did it like that. And now our M SATA, we're gonna go ahead and install this on the motherboard as well. So we're just gonna take this screw out right here and then we're gonna install our M SATA. Look at the orientation of the pins right there. Make sure it matches that. The kind of goes in like that, it has that little click. And then you screw in this corner right there, just like that. So it's been about a week or two since we filmed that first part of the video. Now we're gonna finish up the video. One thing I did notice about this motherboard is it does not have a CPU connection. All it needs is one single 24 pin. If you actually look at it, there is no CPU connection anywhere on this thing. Let's get a listen to how loud this fan is. So my mic is right here. I'm gonna be pretty close to it so you guys can hear it. This thing isn't necessarily quiet per se, but it's not that loud either. I would say it's slightly louder than a standard Intel fan. All right guys, so I got everything set up. I got the monitor, mouse, keyboard, and everything plugged in. I am recording the video output of this motherboard, so you guys will see exactly what I'm seeing. What we're gonna do, we have no OS on here or anything. We've got the power supply plugged in. We're gonna turn this on and see what happens. Looks like it did post, so that's good, right? It posted, that, that's excellent. That means it's working. Half of my worries coming from China, you know what I mean? All right, so let's turn this back off, turn it back on, and we're going to go ahead and check out the BIOS. I'm gonna be pressing the delete key as I turn it on. 
All right, so looking at the BIOS, it's uh, American Mega Trends. There's like the BIOS version. I don't even really know what that means. You can see it's an Ivy Bridge um, Intel Celeron. It's 1800 megahertz, it's pretty low. But again, this is a mining motherboard. So we really don't need that much. Right now, this is only taking 22 watts. That's really good. That's like the lowest power consumption I've seen on any motherboard. PCIe settings, yep. Above 4G decoding is enabled, which is what we want. So we're actually not gonna save anything. So we're just gonna turn this off we're going to put our windows 10 media on a usb in here plug that right in there and then we're going to go ahead and turn this on and set up windows as you can see it has detected windows so we're going to go into the 64 bit make sure you get subscribed because i do have a unboxing review on this e96 flare thermal camera i'm going to get this set up and we're just going to take a quick measurement of the current temperatures with nothing on it whatsoever the ambient temperature in here is about 78 degrees it's kind of warm that's what my hair is all up. So right now Windows is in fact installing. So we're gonna try to look at this at an angle so we don't get any of that emissivity issue. We got a spot right there that's pretty hot and that is actually the SSD that is at around 100 something degrees. So that is the M SATA SSD right there. Looks like that is the chipset right there. Pretty warm. Remember this has nothing on it right now guys. I'm um, looking over here. There's our USB dongle right there. Looking over here on the CPU side. This is all the power delivery components right there. See the CPU itself is actually not that hot, relatively speaking. This right here is our RAM. Uh, that's our 24 pin cable going into our power supply. And you can see that's what our power supply's temperature is. I mean, it's it's pretty cold, it's not that hot. So we can see the chipset actually does get pretty hot to the touch. Maybe I'll put a better heat sink on that, we'll see. All right, so now we just did a check of the thermals on the motherboard with nothing installed on it. What we're gonna do now is actually continue the Windows installation. As soon as that's done, I'm gonna bring you guys back in. All right, guys, so we have made it to the desktop in Windows 10, so now we're just going to go ahead and start the updates. All right, so we got our internet cable right here, our ethernet, go ahead and plug that in there. The network drivers are working, which is great. I was worried I had to go find network drivers for this thing. It is connected to the internet and we are going to run updates. At this point, we're just gonna get let the updates roll and then we'll come back to it after this is done. So it's been about three months since we made that initial recording and I've had this running faithfully. And I just wanna give you guys my review of the BTC37 board. Right now, as an example, this isn't connected to anything, but I got three two slot cards in this thing. Unfortunately, when they're that close together with the shrouds and everything, you got like, I don't know, maybe 10 millimeters between the cards. It's pretty tight, maybe three eighths of an inch between cards. If you were, if you had fans blowing across this, it definitely wouldn't be enough space to uh, get all the heat out because on a lot of these cards, the heat doesn't go this way, it goes up and down. So you would need to do something similar to this. Let me take these cards out. So you probably want to put them every other slot, which again is going to reduce the total amount of cards you could get in this thing, but this way, you'd be able to fit more graphics cards in your system like this would be way better. Another thing I wanted to point out is the three slot cards. So this, my friends, is the EVGA 3090 for the Win 3 Ultra Edition. It has a fat slot, if you can see, it is much thicker. So if I put one of these in, I no longer have enough room to plug in another card right next to it. It can't, there's just no room. I can't even access the slot. It's literally covering the slot. So then in that case, I would be forced to go to the other slot right next to it. Um, yeah, there's just, there's just no room to plug in anything else because it covers the other slot. Another pro is that it's very low power draw. This thing takes extremely little power compared to a full-size motherboard, such as an ATX motherboard like this one. If you guys want to see this motherboard used in a build, you can click on the link right up here um, and you can go watch that video. I did a live stream of building a full mining rig with this motherboard. My thoughts, my final conclusions on the BTC37 motherboard. You might be asking, Tech Shinji, would you buy one? Um, well, let's take a look. You can see I'm holding it. See, I'm just holding it by its weight right now. And you see it's kind of bending. The PCB on this thing is not really, it leaves a lot to be desired. You could kind of see how it's flexing just like that. If you can get one for a decent price, so I would say $150 USD or under, it's okay. Cause you're gonna remember, you're gonna have to buy the RAM, you're gonna have to buy the hard drive. 
We're probably looking around 200 something dollars USD by the time you're all in. So guys, um, I'm sorry that this video was cut up into a lot of sections, but I mean, I did test this over three months. I had it running full time and I never had a problem with it. It was great, it worked fine. I mean, it take very little power. I was worried about the CPU fan kind of giving out, but it was fine. It's kind of loud though, so I wouldn't, I don't like that. You know me, I like these giant passive coolers, no moving parts, one less part to fail. So it's a fine motherboard, it's great. I personally wouldn't buy one in this market because these things go for like, I don't know what, 50, $25 in the bear market. This is basically what I think of as an ASIC. Um, I would much rather have something like this. This, my friends, is a RebTech motherboard. Uh, this is something I'd much rather have, actually. I actually got this from Chum Change. Thank you so much. Big heart. Big heart to uh, Chum Change XD there. I love that guy. Um, I'd much rather have one of these because at least it's special, it's unique, and you eliminate one part of one component of failure. There's USBs right here that connect directly to your risers. And this fits in the standard PCIe slot of a 2X. Um, I'd much rather have something like this. I yes, I know these are like five, six hundred dollars right now at the time of filming, but in my opinion, these are a better uh, buy compared to something like this. I mean, this thing's got a freaking nice backplate. It's stiff. It's strong. Um, it's basically a laptop built into this thing. But if I had the choice between a Rebtech or a B, uh, this is a H310 Pro or one of these. My choices will be in the following order. Probably want to get one of these first. My second choice would probably be something like this, being that I can get this for a decent price. I just, I mean, this thing's just not really that, I mean, look at that, look at that. Like, I don't know, man, it's a, there's a reason why, you know, people think that I buy expensive things. No, I just like buying quality that lasts. So that's my personal opinion on this. If you have any questions about this motherboard, put it down in the comments below. If you have any questions for me or you want to talk with me directly, you can always talk to us in our Discord. It'll be linked in the description below as well. The Misfit Mining Discord. Self-promotion, shameless plug. I do offer a service that will get you one-on-one -on -one dedicated time with me to give you a consultation on either building a rig related to computers or water cooling specifically. Um, I do offer services like that in the Discord. Just go to my section in Discord and click on the TechSync consultation request. I've actually already had three consultations with people and it's been um, it's been great. It's been quite humbling to see where you guys are coming from and the struggles that you have because I too had those struggles. And again, that is not a requirement. That's just if you want to get that one-on-one -on -one dedicated professional time from me. So yeah, guys, we'll see you in the next one. Thanks so much for watching this video. Make sure you go watch those other videos on my channel if you like this uh, content here. Take care, everyone. Bye. And now I am slating into the scene, BTC 37.